Okay. Welcome everybody. Claire Wasserman here, founder and author of Ladies Get Paid. We are an educational platform, global community, and a book that is all about helping women earn more and live better. Um, and I know the economy is a little scary right now. Uh, it's weird though, because when you look at the statistics, or at least when you read the papers, it's all this quote, good news, right? Like the economy actually is doing well, but it doesn't seem like it because just a year ago, there was a ton of hiring and now all that overhiring, a lot of these companies, and by companies, I mean tech companies, they're pulling back uh, and, and they're laying off huge swaths of people. That being said, a lot of those companies still have a higher headcount now than they did pre-pandemic. I don't know if that makes anybody feel better or worse. Either way, reality, it's hard to know if things are going well or not. So my goal in these meetups, these weekly Motivation Monday job seeker support groups is to just get you grounded in the here and now and to take command of what you can, right? Knowing that there's so much chaos around us uh, and it's, you know, you, you, you just can't control pretty much any of it, but in, in the moment, and that is what life is, right? Life is lived moment to moment. What can we do to at least be just okay with our circumstances and feel like we're not in quicksand? Um, and I appreciate you all jumping in the chat. Um, I would love to bring on Cynthia Ordunia uh, to the stage. I'm going to pin to second screen. Let's see, did that work? I don't know. Add pin, there we go, now that worked. And I'll go ahead and ask you to unmute. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna just playing around with a new little format. You know, each time if you if you're if you've come to these before, you see that I like to kind of switch things up. Um, and this time I want to speak less. Uh, in fact, I'd rather speak not at all. My throat really hurts. So I'm going to have Cynthia really take over. Um, she is a career coach who really specializes in what we call kind of multi-hyphenate people, multi-passionate folks. And um, I've been doing LinkedIn lives pretty much every day for the last couple of weeks, if not months now. And my LinkedIn lives have included coaches um, like Cynthia. I think Cynthia might've been our first coach on um, who really shared how to stitch together um, a multi-passionate life into a focused career path. And it's funny, I, I mean, I love Cynthia. I wanted her on because we had such a great chat before on LinkedIn. But interestingly enough, I also got an email from somebody who had come to a job seeker group asking specifically to address folks who feel like they have all of these different passions in their life and are feeling like they have to choose or should they choose, or, you know, there's a question of like, how do you stitch it together for yourself? And then how do you tell the story for others? Um, so I don't know if that person is here. Um, you know, I mean, you know, if they want to jump in, if y'all have any questions specific uh, to that, that sort of conundrum of having this like big, uh, passionate life, and then feeling like you need to choose. So Cynthia, I don't know if I did such a great job of uh, teeing you up there, but I'd love if you could maybe go into a little more detail about um, what kind of coaching you do and your backstory, how you got there and what you'd like us to focus on today. I think we're going to also do breakouts as well. So I think so you'll talk for probably about 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes. And then we, and then you'll give us an assignment um, when we do breakouts, uh, a prompt for folks to connect with each other on and to really put into practice uh, some of the things you'll talk about now. Yeah, absolutely. So I get a little bit more about what I do. Claire actually did a really great job of explaining everything. Um, so I'm a career and business coach for multi-passionates. And what I really noticed with people who are multi-passionate is that you're often going to find yourself feeling like you're stuck in your career. Maybe people are telling you that you're unfocused or flaky because there's so many potential career paths that you can see yourself in. And you don't want to limit yourself to the one and true path that everyone consistently tells you is supposed to be the way that you grow your career. You know, you choose something, you stay in it, you grow, you climb the career ladder, but that sounds boring to you, or that sounds like, you know, a life that you don't necessarily want to live or a career path that you don't necessarily want to have. So what does it mean when you have multiple passions? How can you combine those passions together to find jobs that have multiple of your interests or pivot, right? And reinvent yourself every couple of years, whenever it is that you feel like something new is lighting you up. What does that look like in your career? And how do we make that together? So that's really what I focus on in terms of my coaching. Um, and a little bit about how I got here was I actually started with a multimedia and art background. And what you're taught specifically 
is how to consistently try new things, how to create a specific artistic niche, how to constantly be innovating and doing something new. And what I realized was that people outside of this particular industry or education are not taught, let's constantly learn new things. Let's constantly pivot. Let's um, you know, learn how to intertwine these different things and create something that's new and innovative for myself, for my career, for maybe what you want to create a freelance business for, for maybe a position that hasn't even been created yet. So that's how I got into it was I had this artistic background and that's really what I use for my coaching philosophy. Um, and so that's what I essentially utilize for people that come from all over different types of industries. And I help them create a career that's really one of a kind for them. So you know, whether it's, you know, they're coming in and looking for something to fulfill their passions now, they want to create that freelance business or a side hustle, um, or they're ready to transition and pivot into a completely new industry. And then once we decide on what it is that we want to do, how do you craft a story that makes sense so that people understand why you want to go into this new industry and also why you're the perfect person to do it? Because often what people will do is you know, they're explaining because they're so interested, they're going to give you maybe three options of what kind of job they're interested in. Or, you know, they're going to go on and on in their interviews about maybe experiences that don't necessarily match up because it's um, not what they've done before. So really, it's how do we look at all of your experiences and craft the right narrative for each position to show them that, okay, here's everything that are the transferable skills. And then we utilize, you know, the experiences that are unique of yours and say, this is why you would be the best person to hire, because this is all the value that you bring to the table. That's a different mindset and a different way of thinking that maybe none of the other candidates have. Um, so that's really what I focus on and how I got into coaching was I really wanted to bring that, you know, dynamic, flexible idea of living and creating into other people's careers. And I find that all super exciting. Um, so yeah, and Claire, I don't know if you had anything you wanted me to add or any additional questions. No, that was awesome. Um, and I, uh, I just would love if you could give some folks, well, by the way, if anybody wants to jump in and, you know, ask a question in the chat, um, if this is resonating with you, that would be, I think this would be really a great time to do that. Um, I would love if you could give folks maybe some uh, concrete steps for, let's start with the, maybe I'm at a crossroads and I'm not sure which job to apply to, um, because I have all of these different passions and ways I can go. I'd love to tackle that. And then we can tackle the telling of the story part. Um, if you don't mind, just a few concrete first steps that folks can take good exercises for them to do uh, after this call or right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so first thing that you want to do, if you have tons of passions, you're not sure which way you want to go, you're still telling people that, you know, there's a couple of different jobs that you're interested in. Um, what we really want to do is sit down and have a little bit of a brainstorming session. So I would encourage you to write out all of your ideas for the things that you're interested in. Um, and this is not a place to hold back, whether you wanna write it down, whether you wanna put it on your computer. Um, so you're gonna brainstorm all of these ideas. Take about five minutes, nothing too long because we don't wanna overthink it. And then once you brainstorm all these ideas, you wanna look at them, X out any of them that don't make you feel excited and then circle all the ones where you're like, yes, I see myself doing this and I could do this and I could do this. So maybe it's going to narrow it down to potentially five to three. Um, and what you're going to do with the ones that are exciting and the ones that you've circled are start to combine those pieces. So for example, if you had marketing and social media as one of your ideas for brainstorming, but then on the other side, you had health. Right. So how can you, for, for example, combine those two things? You could be a social media manager for a hospital. You could be a social media manager for a private practice. What are the different industries within health um, that you really want to help and focus on? Or would you be doing socials for nutritionists? Like what is that niche um, that you really want to go into? 
So start to do that with all of the different options that you have and see how many you can actually mix together. And this is going to get your brain thinking of, oh, wow, look at all of the creative ways that I can come up with jobs that are exciting to me that are meshing my interests. You don't even just have to mesh two, you can mesh up to three um, and see how many combinations you can come up with. So once you have those combinations, it's gonna go over once again, which ones of those sound exciting and which one of those, it was just an idea to have, but it's not necessarily something that you wanna move forward with. So that's how we're gonna start to look at the actual jobs that you are interested in. Um, and that's a good way to start on, you know, what is the actual job that you wanna do, whether that's been created yet or not. Um, but yeah, that, that would be the homework that I would give everyone today is really go through that brainstorming session in a creative way without necessarily focusing on what are all the jobs that I see on LinkedIn and do I fit there? Instead, it's going to be focusing on what are, what is it that I want and do these job descriptions or do these companies match up with what it is that I want to do, right? So you're taking more of an empowered stance versus saying, do I fit in their bubble? It's do they fit in mine? Mm, that's interesting. Um, I'm seeing some good questions here. Um, I'm going to jump to this one. What if you don't have something in mind, more of you see something new in your search that you didn't even know existed and that's how you get excited? Um, I mean, that just sounds, I'm not sure quite what the question is there because that just sounds great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. Um, I don't know if you have any response to that. Um, otherwise, we could jump to the um, other two questions, Chris and Tammy's. Um, I mean, in that case, I would say go with what makes you feel excited. If you find it online and it makes you feel excited, amazing, apply for it. Don't let anything stop you from applying for it. Um, but I would still recommend doing the brainstorming session because the reason that you don't have something in mind is because you haven't pushed your creative bubble yet. Mm -hmm. You haven't done these experiences yet. So how do you know that things won't come to mind? And more often than not, I will have clients come with me and we'll have an entire huge paper filled with ideas when originally they thought that they didn't have one. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind and still something that I would recommend you try. Mm -hmm. And also I, I find the process of just like expanding your mind to be just a good one in general, you know, regardless of job seeking, it's going to just get you to be more uh, flexible and expansive in the way that you approach life, um, which is just helps with resilience and options. Question from Ra Rachel, do you have any recommendations for an app or programs put all of this onto visually like a mind map? So you can definitely create a mind map um, on your own. They're pretty simple to even draw out, right? So they're just going to be a bunch of circles um, with everything related to it. So if you look up examples of mind maps, you can easily create a draft um, on a piece of paper, but something that I have used for a digital mind map would either be Miro or um, Google Jams. Um, so either one you could do. Mm, okay, great. Um, okay, so question from, uh, let's do, uh, Let's do Chris. Okay. I am a combination of social and tech skills and I don't fit into either pile. So I confuse the recruiters. I'm at a career pivot and I had a rotten year last year. So I'm still recovering. I'm sorry to hear that, Chris. Um, I think so. So yeah, so we're moving on to the kind of like telling of the story. So is there a different story that you tell to a recruiter than you do to, and I'm assuming these are like third party headhunters as opposed to an internal recruiter. Is the story different for them than it is for somebody who's like direct to client? Um, not, I mean, not necessarily. So I would say when it's, you know, when you have that mix, what's most important is utilizing the transferable skills that you have in the interview. So what I typically go through with my clients is, I think I mentioned this in our LinkedIn live, it was like a resume master doc, where we have all of your experience in your own document. It's not a resume. It's literally your master doc of all of your experiences. And what we do within that document is instead of just having your you know job description that you would put in a resume, we start to create different portions from each experience. So if you were working, for example, in tech at a startup company doing social media, but 
you had a lot of different hats. We're going to create different descriptions for each um, essentially responsibilities that you have. So for example, under your social media manager role in your, ras in your master resume doc, you're going to put social media, which was all of the responsibilities you did under social media. Maybe you were doing sales. You're going to create another little bucket right underneath. What are all the responsibilities that you did with sales? Maybe you were doing, I don't know, a little bit of product. Um, it doesn't really matter what the different sections are, but you want to start to section them out because once we're creating a resume, we're going to look at those descriptions and say, okay, for the social media manager position, they really wanted someone with X experience. So you're going to take the, you know, social media manager description, but maybe a different position wanted you to have a little bit of sales or chatting to people. You're going to take that bullet points that you have under your master resume doc. So what we're doing is like really getting specific on what your transferable skills are in each role so that when you're speaking in an interview, you're only going to talk about the things that you did in the role that are exactly um, fitted for the position. And then the way that you kind of start to make yourself unique in the eyes of the employer is you can kind of sprinkle at the end, basically, I've just shown you I have all of the qualifications, all of the transferable skills. And in addition to that, I also have a background in X, Y, and Z. And this is why that's such a benefit and a value add to this role. And this is what I bring to it that nobody else has. So your extra experiences make you unique, but you don't want to make that the forefront of your interview. You want to make, you want to make it very clear first that you have everything that they're looking for. And then I, like I said, you kind of sprinkle at the end, right? That difference and uniqueness that you have to add that, that really gives them that extra, okay, I, I can remember this candidate. I can remember why they were different. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Tammy, Tammy's question here was, um, I have a passion for OD training, but that hasn't been my main job for a while. So how do I position myself for that type of job now? Um, yes, the position title can be changed to anything that you've done in love. Okay. I mean, I think you've answered a little bit of this already, but if you want to speak a bit more to it, um, and then if you want to go into the prompt, if you have a prompt for folks, if we do a breakout, um, something for us to work on together, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, so I guess in terms of if something hasn't been your main job for a while, but it's something that you want to do again, it's focusing in the interviews, in your resume on making sure that at the forefront, they see that you've had experience in that OD slash training. Um, and again, speak to that in the interview process first before telling the story of how you transitioned out of it or what you're currently doing. You want to make sure that the skills of that role, again, are at the forefront. And then you can explain maybe why you haven't been in that position recently, why you transitioned out of it, why you want to go back into it. And then there's the narrative that you can bring in, but it's always about putting, you know, they're looking for someone that can do the job. So just making sure that you're being very clear that you can do the job, you have experience to do the job. Mm -hmm. By the way, something I've said before uh, that I'm, I'm going to actually just add myself to the um, video. Okay, there we go. Um, something that I've I've said before, if you've come to the uh, to come to any of my talks, is I'm a huge, huge believer in um, talking to people who have the job you want or have a similar job to the one that you're applying for, and ask them about what their challenges are, what's difficult about it. A when you find out this stuff, it's going to really gut check you. Do you still want this job? Okay. <laughs> like knowing that they are working 24 seven or have, you know, so I'm talking like logistics day to day. What are the challenges, the things that drive them nuts? If you are still excited about this job, awesome. Number two or B, the reason I think this is really important to do, especially if you're making uh, a pivot or trying to demonstrate transferable skills is you can then straight up say to the interviewer, I have talked to five people who have this job or similar job. Here's my understanding of what can be tricky about it. I'm going to show you how what I've done speaks to that. Effectively making the case that the learning curve will be minimal because we can all say that we can quote, do the job. We can all speak about the ideal of what we would accomplish. But when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of what's difficult, do you have the ability to do it? 
Uh, and a lot of it will be transferable skills, but some of it might be pretty specific and you're going to have to really show them, hey, listen, though I don't yet have the exact experience or network in this thing, I've done the research, okay? Like I've interviewed the people, I subscribe to the trade magazines, I've gone to the conference, I listen to these podcasts, right? I also, knowing that I'm, you know, could potentially quote, be at a disadvantage, I got the hunger to prove myself, right? So, you know, I, I don't know how you feel, Cynthia, about calling out the elephant in the room here. You know, I don't, you, you probably would urge people not to really underscore the fact that they're an outsider candidate or non-traditional candidate. But I do feel like there is merit in being able to say, listen, if these are any of your concerns, let me proactively speak to how I'm, I'm already tackling it, not just trust me, I got this. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Um, well, I definitely, I go into the interviews with a sales mentality and it's all about selling yourself. So it's not, we can absolutely talk about it straight on and I encourage people to do so, but the way that you frame it is going to be different, right? Because like one thing that I mentioned, you said is, you know, I have the passion. I can do this. I know that I'm at a disadvantage. You're not at a disadvantage. Why? Because of the unique experience that you bring to the table. Like what your different experience does not make you a disadvantage. It makes you a value add, but how that's what we get into in the concrete version of the story. Right. And where we start to sell, like, this is why I can do this. And even if you want to go deeper, I learned the challenges. This is how I would tackle this, right? This is how proactive I am in going after this. It's all about selling yourself and the value, right? But you're not at a disadvantage the way that you have to sell yourself in there because the minute that you kind of give them that idea, it's it's already it's going to start to trickle in just like from a psychology perspective. Um, so one thing that I have asked in my own interviews from time to time, and, and also I encourage people to ask is, you know, is there anything in my experience um, that makes you hesitate mm -hmm. on hiring me as a candidate? Is there anything in my experience, you know, that, if, that, that there's any additional questions you may have? And so then you can speak to exactly that, you know, what it, they're going to tell you immediately. Like, okay, well, there's this, it makes me question X, Y, and Z, can, can we talk a little bit more about that? And whenever I've asked this, it has surprised interviewers altogether because people are afraid to ask this question. They're afraid to ask, you know, what, but you want to know, you want to know what their questions are now so that you can advocate for yourself, fight those biases before they're happening, because regardless, they're going to be happening without you if you, if you don't speak to them. And so I think- has that in the chat. She said, what concerns do you have for me about this role so I can address them now? Yeah. And I, I would say also like concerns about my experience, mm -hmm. um, not so much the role because you want to speak to like, oh, okay, maybe you don't have X, Y, and Z. You'll, you can say, okay, but yes, I do have this and this is how this helps me do X or whatever it may be. Um, because it's not so much that they have concerns about the role, they have concerns about you specifically being in the role, right? So it's just the way that you craft the question yeah. um, that you can speak to it and advocate for yourself. Ooh, Teodora has an interesting question. I know I wanted to go right into the breakouts, but I wanna address this first because this is actually gonna to speak to anybody who maybe has the itch to explore entrepreneurship, especially, uh, which by the way, is something I, Previously, pandemic, I would not have encouraged anybody to start their own business <laughs> as a business owner. Like, I'm learning. It's like I'm getting an MBA uh, that I'm paying for, whereas if you work for somebody else, it's like you're getting an MBA that they're paying for, right? Like, learn on someone else's dime. But when you are responsible for your own paycheck and all of your life lessons, woo! That being said, I actually am singing a little bit of a different tune now post-pandemic. I think we should all be exploring just, and it doesn't need to be hardcore. It could just be open-mindedness. If I were to ever create a business, could be small, passive income, like just so that we can be our own safety nets. Um, and I know that you also are a business coach along with, you know, career coach. So this is a question uh, that Teodora asked, what is your advice for those of us where we have trouble because the job doesn't actually exist and the challenge is actually creating it from scratch? 
that, I mean, her question sounds like it's specific to creating a job at another company, but it mm -hmm. also could be a business too, right? This is for anybody who maybe has a lot of passions, ideas, thoughts, and they're not really quite fighting the, fighting the right role. So, hey, maybe listen, they need to create it for themselves, whether they're becoming a freelancer, which is a business owner, or, you know, creating a, a product or something. Um, could you just speak a little bit to how somebody might stitch that together or start the first steps of imagining themselves as a business owner and where do they go from there? Yeah, well, I think Aang actually has a really good response that um, pointing out the problem that this role solves. Um, because the same thing, when it comes to being a business owner, whether you're freelancing, whether you want to take it full time, whether it's a side hustle, it's all about being able to solve a problem. It's what challenges in the market and how do you solve this problem? So it's it would also be the same way for a job. So this how does this role specifically solve either a problem within the company or how does it support a certain department, you know, part of the um, whatever, maybe the products that they're creating, whatever that may be, the marketing, the sales, how does this role you know, fill a hole, fill a gap. And that's the same thing that you're going to be thinking about when you're creating a business is what am I make? how am I making things easier for people by providing this service? Um, and why would they need me? You know, like you really want to, like, what is that urgency that they would need you right now? So that's what you really need to get clear on. I think it's amazing to have this idea of a job that hasn't even been created because that's so exciting. Um, sometimes, in the manifestation world as well, which I'm very, very big on. Um, you can also just manifest talking to people and saying, hey, I'm looking for this kind of job. And it oftentimes just lands in your lap. I've had a lot of clients actually that have had roles made specifically for them where the company just loved them so much. They were like, I don't think this role is for you, but I want you. Mm -hmm. And a role is created for you. So that I also just want people to know that that's a possibility. And there are so many different ways that things can happen. It's the thing about manifestation is just not dictating the way that it's going to happen because you don't know the way that it's going to happen. You just know, this is what I want. Okay, let's be open to all the possibilities of how that can happen for me so that we're not closing any doors and blocking that from happening. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, the first job I ever got out of college, it was for a nonprofit um, and they had an issue, which was they needed young donors to give money. All of their, the people who, you know, all the fundraising was coming from people in literally their nineties. Uh, mm -hmm. and so they had this problem and they didn't yet have a job description for it. They just had the problem. Mm -hmm. And I would say for anybody who's designing, you know, or trying to think about what kind of either role I could create at this company or, um, a, you know, business I could create, you might be feeling pressure because you're trying to come up with answers that you don't yet no, have enough information about, meaning instead of trying to come up with the solution, maybe come up with questions to ask, what are ways that you can get more information, whether it's from the company or from potential customers or about competition in the market, similar company, you know, any data that you can just start collecting because what you want to ultimately create may just naturally emerge when you just look at all the data you've collected. So again, instead of jumping straight to like, what's the solution or what's the answer, let's maybe think about what's what are the questions that I can ask and who do I need to be asking them of that will then give me a next sort of rock to, you know, or foothold to climb onto if this is a rock uh, that we're climbing. Mm -hmm. um, Carolyn asked a question, how can you stop going lateral in your career to finally go up? Um, I'll, I'll, I mean, Cynthia, feel free to jump in on that one. I, I have a just quick answer to that is, again, this may be a, what do you need to go up? Like you're, you know, this is who are we going to talk to? Like who has careers that you admire or who's in a position that you find interesting or solving a challenge that you would find, you know, like challenging to you, right? Um, how did they get there? So what are the skills that they needed to develop or the network or, you know, it, again, it's like, it, it's so personal to everybody, but can we think about who is already in the position and asking them questions again, to my point earlier of like, perhaps this is more of like a data collection um, exercise than anything else. What do you think about that one, Cynthia? So I feel like that will actually 
what I'm going to say is it will probably actually transition to the questions that I have for everyone. Right. Um, but what comes to mind for me is when you're asking that question, are you allowing ex your external forces to dictate your growth or are you in charge of your growth, right? Um, so for example, is it that the company that you're in maybe doesn't have many opportunities for you to go up within the position that you are? Are you consistently going after roles that are higher at different companies within your company? Like who are you speaking to about moving upwards in your career? And oftentimes too, you know, I have clients that are like, oh, you know, I really want to do this, but I feel like I, you know, need these couple of stepping stones before I go after what I want. Why? Mm -hmm. Why, like, why, why do we need that? Like, why are, are we going to go after something that's not as exciting, something that we think, you know, is easier to get into that it's not going to give us financially the money that we need? Um, go after what you want right now. Because that women don't do that enough. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm, I don't care if it's like, you know, it's scary. I know that it's scary. I know maybe you don't have all the qualifications. So what? That's the purpose of learning how to sell yourself. That's the purpose of selling your story. That's the, that's, that's the empowerment piece is regardless, I'm going to go after what I want, no matter what it is. And I've had, even when I was in college, I was applying for like these management roles. I got calls back from people that for roles that were like seven plus years of experience. I hadn't even graduated college. What? You're like, what, what is that? And it just, you just have to have the audacity to take the chance and do it, to talk to people about it. This is what I want and, and have that secure place in you, right? So don't let your external reality dictate where your career is going. You take that by the reins and you steer it where you want it to go. And the worst thing that they can say is no, okay, well, you didn't have it before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like that's, that's the worst possible thing that can happen. But more likely than not, you're going to get responses, um, especially when you know how to sell yourself. So, you know, it, it, it's just really up to you. I mean, I, I had gotten, you know, at very early in my career where people were like, hey, I, I saw that you were working, whether, you know, in DI or whatever, just wanted to recommend you to, it was like this big national, um, you know, like baseball team or whatever it may be. And it was a director level position. I was like, I don't even have the experience to be a, a director at, like, <laughs> at this time. But I had people who saw me at a level that was high enough to be referred to a friend that they were like, I, I want you to talk to this girl. Right. Right. You so know, me. that that's um, what I would add to, to that conversation is to, you know, really take um, an empowered stance mm -hmm. on your career. Um, there's a couple more questions, but I think we're going to go into the breakout. So after the breakouts, come back because we'll answer those questions uh, in the last couple of minutes um, of session. But tell us, yeah, tell us what are the prompts that we would like to work on? And if you want me to divide people into groups of two, three, four, you know, how to best in the time frame. And then um, we'll do that for X amount of minutes and then we'll come back. Sure. Um, so the prompts, I can actually put them in the chat. Right. And then Millie, I hope you'll stick around because I would love at the end for you to give us your story. It sounds like you just, your whole life just changed in a week and you got a job and you, but you also started a side thing and that's to, and you know, you're, you, yeah, would love Millie. So I'm going to have you come up mm -hmm. and close us out at the very, very end. So please stick around. Um, we've got about 20 more minutes. So the questions that I have, I actually, I like to go backwards in the job search because sometimes when your job search is not working. It's because you're going after things that you don't really want. You're mm. going after things that you know that you can do based on your skill set, but that may not be exciting to you. That may that may just be what you feel is the next step because it's easy to do. I, you know, I have all these skills. Why not? Right? Like, it, but it's not what you truly want to do. So, we when you go backwards, you come back with an energy of. Um, I know what I'm passionate about and I know what I want to do. And that's when you start to have these little moments of manifestation and these like really great um, responses come back to you because the energy that you have on not applying after jobs that are exciting, that you love, 
is the same energy you're going to get back in your job search. And people are going to feel that. And it's the same energy that people feel when you are excited and you're passionate. And when people choose you, when you don't have all the experience, it's because you had someone that was just so phenomenally interested in this company or this role and connected with everybody, right? Like, but that's, that's the energy shift that you want. So I would love for all of you to almost take a step back and really chat about or journal on. If you could have your dream job right now, what is that dream job? And what is stopping you from going after it? Like what, what are the blockers? Whether it's, I don't feel like I have the experience yet. Um, you know, I feel like it's a pivot, so it's very difficult. Um, it seems too high up of a position for what I want to do right now. I just want you to think of all the things as to why you may not be applying to these roles or why you may not be going after this right now. Um, and I really think that we'll be able to uncover some blocks today when we come back. Um, so Claire, I think it'll be fine to do maybe, uh, even if it's like three or four, I don't think that it, it would, yeah. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do three because I find that people don't have enough time to chat usually. Um, and then how long do you want everybody to do this for? Um, maybe until nine fifty. Okay, great. All right. So then let's do two people if it's going to be, okay. If it's going to be yes. about eight minutes. So. so we have time to like talk about it when they yeah. get back. Okay. So if anyone has any questions, you know where to find us. Okay. So two to three. Should, some people may have three people. Okay, or two. Okay, ready? All right, we'll see you guys in about eight to 10 minutes. Okay. Open all rooms. Dun, dun, dun.
All right, we're, the rooms are closing in 36 seconds, so we'll all come back together then. Okay. And then I have a I have a hard stop in 10 minutes. So I always go over, but I actually can't because I'm meeting with a client and she's negotiating her salary this afternoon. So we got to get her into good shape. Uh, go Jerry. Uh, so let's the breakout rooms are closing in 13 seconds. And then I'm going to have Cynthia, if you want to prompt any discussion for folks to, you know, just recap what they learned or any insights they had. And then I'm going to have Millie close us out. Uh, so we'll be done exactly at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, if you are in California. Uh, okay. All right. We are back. Uh, I'm also having the pinwheel of death uh, on my computer. So let's no, pray no. that <laughs> I don't stall out. Uh, so Cynthia, Eddie, um, I'll, I'll let you take it from here. Just the next couple of minutes. If we want to all talk about what we discovered in our breakouts. I hope you all met interesting people. Sure. I mean, I think I'd love to focus on more so any blockers that came up for people. So is there anyone... Um, that would love to share, you know, what is stopping them from going after their dream job. Now, I would love to hear. Mm, by the way, um, I'm going to just press pause on the recording um, just for now. Just tell us, uh, what the good news that you had. Yeah, so I turned off my video. Hopefully that helps the reception. Is it better? Uh, sure. Let's go. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, basically, so I left New York City in 2017. I was a designer in corporate for about 10 years. I was totally burnt out emotionally, spiritually, creatively. Went on this like existential journey crisis across the country, ended up in Oregon, had a lot of trouble finding work uh, remotely and otherwise, uh, like locally at Nike or Adidas, any of the companies I would have traditionally had no problem. So my mental health really struggled. Um, and I had to get on like warrior mode with taking care of myself basically. And that has now led me to being the director of like a wellness facility here in Bend, Oregon, um, which I wouldn't have gotten to if I didn't have to build the fortitude and strength within myself. So, and this is literally like a dream job for me at this point. <laughs> so everybody that I share this with is like, you, you are perfect for this role, all these things. So, but I'm just saying it took me seven years um, and that it took a lot of fortitude and a lot of self-care and literally relying on groups like this, therapists, friends, um, you know, trying to volunteer, trying to create some sort of meaning in my life during that time. So that's the best I could kind of briefly share, I guess. Amazing. I'm so proud of you. Any words of, you know, if there was like one takeaway from this whole experience that you've had in the process, um, you know, that you, people can hang on to, hold on to until next week, that would be awesome. Yeah, I just, I get chills. Like you guys, like this is such like living under a patriarchal capitalist society is oppressive in so many ways. I, I literally am like chilled right now with this thought. But if I could express one thing, it is do what lights you up, what makes you feel good and do it constantly. Like, even if it's like walking your dog, even if it's like literally cleaning your car, I don't care. Like, you know, it could be um, braiding your niece's hair, but like doing it every day. It literally, like any little stupid fucking thing, do it as much as possible all the time. And and the the, the work will eventually come. And if your resources are dwindling, you know, try to put your ego aside, get a grocery job. And if you're not getting those jobs like I wasn't because you're too smart for them, you know, um, I don't know what to tell you about that. Then you do need to like take state resources. You do need to like figure out ways to, to uh, be resourceful and put your ego aside, but also do the things you love while doing that. <laughs> so, yeah. Amazing. 
Good. Ellen said, again, I did. Did I need to hear this today? Rachel, this was my first call. We need to thank you. Yes. And this is like tip of the iceberg. If you've come to any of our other calls, like we've been, you know, some of them are like super, super, super inspirational. Um, and it's all you, it's all you all. And Cynthia, thank you. I know we're going to be having some follow-up information, uh, sending everybody your way, um, and super appreciate, but yeah, drop LinkedIn's into the chat in the final minute. So y'all can connect. Um, but one thing I will do is in the follow-up email, I'm going to write a LinkedIn post based off of today. And if you want to comment on the post, you know, that's a great way to stay connected to other people. Um, and also, you know, and if you're all feeling like, oh, I don't want to be on LinkedIn. I mean, whatever you post on LinkedIn, use it, look at it as a service you're providing somebody else, like share pieces of your own journey, you know, so it's not you self-promoting, it's you self, you know, it's you serving others, right? And also self promote, and that's good. And too. I want to add something really quickly. I know you have to go, Claire. <laughs> just like super quick. Um, I so much. I really appreciate Millie just for sharing. I want to let you all know that it doesn't have to take also just seven years. Like you can absolutely make this process quicker. And shares. Claire is going to be sharing with you um, my free masterclass, how to manifest your dream job, where you're going to learn more about manifestation. If you want to sign up for it. Um, how to do things quickly, where I was able to get a job during the pandemic in under five weeks. I was able to get jobs that would pay, you know, $24,000 more. Um, and just, you know, all the awesome stuff that comes when you have the right story, the right mindset, and all of that good stuff um, that we were talking about today. So I just wanted to share that with you all. And um, I can also add the link here in the chat very quickly. Um, Awesome, guys. All right. So we'll see you in your inbox and hopefully next Monday. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate you all. Now go get paid. <laughs>